Tonight, Federal High Court in Abuja orders the arrest of INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu for alleged contempt of court. Appeal Court nullifies the judgment of the Federal High Court dismissing the National Assembly's election reordering bill for lack of jurisdiction. Gale of party defection continues as more leaders of the All Progressive Congress dub the ruling party, amongst them the Sokoto State Governor Aminu Tambuwal. Opposition supporters go on rampage in Zimbabwe's capital Harare as the MDC alliance alleges fraud by the ruling Zanufier in the country's presidential election. On business news tonight, Bureau of Public Enterprises commences review of all Nigerian ports concession agreements signed between the federal government and private concessioners in 2006. On sports news, Yamal Yimmer Mekonen of Ethiopia wins the first gold medal at the 2018 African Athletics Championship in Asaba, Delta State. We begin tonight from Abuja, where the Federal High Court has ordered the police to arrest the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, for refusing to appear before it. Justice Stephen Pam issued a warrant of arrest following what he describes as Mr. Mahmoud's absence in court for the third time. According to the judge, the INEC boss was absent in court on July the 5th and the 10th in spite of a valid order asking him to appear. The judge made the order while ruling on a preliminary objection by INEC and his chairman in a contempt proceeding filed by the chairman and legal advisor of the People's Democratic Party in Anambra State. Individuals that head public institutions must not put themselves in position as if they are above the law. When you do so, when you do so, you risk the anger of the court. When you do so, the sledgehammer of the law will come down. And this is what we have seen today. The order of 2014 was given when Professor Yakubu was not the chairman of INEC. No order was served on him. He was not a party to the suit. He challenged the competence of the proceedings on the 26th of July 20, uh, 2016. That motion is still pending before this court. He has not had it. Again, he ordered the chairman to come. No order was served on the chairman. The due process of law must be complied. We respect the due process of court and we respect judicial proceedings. But my view, um, the order for his arrest, with due respect, um, is something that I can't explain. And staying with legal matters, the Court of Appeal in Abuja has nullified the April 25th judgment of the Federal High Court, which dismissed the National Assembly's position on the reordering of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2018. Although the controversial section of the bill was removed and its revised edition resent to President Muhammad Buhari for assent, the Court of Appeal held that the Federal High Court lacked jurisdiction to entertain the suit in the first place. In a lead judgment of a five-man panel led by the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Zainab Bukachua, the Court held that the suit was premature as a bill could not be challenged in the law court until it became an act. The National Assembly had approached the appellate court seeking for a dismissal of the Federal High Court judgment, which held that the National Assembly could not usurp the powers of INEC to decide on the order of the elections. From Abuja, we move to Sokoto State, where the wave of defections blowing in the ruling All Progressive Congress APC has caught up with the state governor, Aminu Tambua, as he moves from the APC to the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Tambuwal says he is leaving the APC because the leadership of the party has failed. He was speaking to his supporters who gathered at the government house in Sokoto to applaud him as he leads them back to the PDP. Right from the entrance of the government house in the state capital, one gets the drift that the unusual was going to happen. 
The wind of defection has found its way to the seat of the caliphate, blowing towards the leadership of the state. And then a crowd is formed, comprising supporters and loyalists of Governor Aminu Tambual. They soon found their way into the government house with banners bearing different inscriptions indicative of their loyalty to the state governor. Governor Tambuwal steps out to grant welcome from the crowd as he addresses them on the political wranglings in the country and his plans to leave the ruling All Progressive Congress. The former Speaker of the House of Representatives did not mince words as he admits being one of those who convinced the people to vote for the APC in 2015. But now he's changing guards and ready to return to the PDP, a party he dumped in 2013. But first, he wants the people to give their consent. Governor Aminu Tambuwal obviously has the support of his loyalists in his new mission. What is, however, left to be seen is his agenda for the elections next year. It appears the Senate president's move from the APC to the PBP will continue to dominate political discourse, especially now that the presidency has commented on the issue. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, says the present administration did not gain anything from the office of the Senate President and would lose nothing with his exit. Mr. Lai Mohammed was speaking to State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. Our correspondent, Gloria Mezuke, tells us more. The president at the Federal Executive Council meeting a few hours after his return from an ECOWAS meeting in Lume, Togo. After the council meeting, reactions poured in on the latest defection by the Senate President Bukola Saraki, describing the defections as a storm in a teacup. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, says the APC has nothing to lose. If we are not a member of the APC, I don't think the party and the government could have suffered more than they have already. In other words, what we're saying is that the, 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 the Senate President 
I'll behave all along as if you are a member of the opposition, deliberately slowing down the progress of the APC led federal government. I mean, if we didn't gain anything by having a member as a Senate president, we stand to lose nothing by losing him as a member of our party. On the other hand, the national chairman of the APC wants the Senate president to drop the crown. But whatever is the reason, uh, we can't decar from party, we can't decar from Nigeria. The only thing that there are other consequential issues that every man and woman of honor who has taken such decision will be expected to follow through. Because, uh, I mean, you do not collect a crown uh, that belongs to a family and you wore it on behalf of the family. If, for your personal reasons, which he has enumerated, and we don't need to debate them, you have chosen to go to another family, it is just a matter of honor that you leave the crown uh, in the house uh, that the crown belongs to. The Senate leader has, however, challenged the People's Democratic Party to publish names of their members as he discloses a possible convening of the House to consider the President's request for violent. I know the other side is claiming they have uh, 55, they have 60, they have 70, but they have never given anybody a name. So make uh, your judgment there. We challenge, in fact, I'm using this opportunity to challenge them to publish the names of their senators, the PDP senators. In spite of the gill of the factions which has hit the APC, the ruling party clearly says it remains unshaken. It would be interesting to see this situation play out in the coming months before the 2019 general elections. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, President Mohamed Buhari to embark on a 10-day annual leave to the United Kingdom tomorrow. Join us again for the details.